conspiracy theories are great, and the best ones are the ones that make even the staunchest skeptic think, hang on a minute. There are a ton of them out there, and they range from the bizarre belief that Denver Airport is the headquarters of the New World Order to the truth behind chemtrails. Weird, sure, but we're all about food here on Mashed, and if you've ever wondered if there are some serious food-related conspiracy theories floating around out there, well, the internet does not disappoint. Should you be thinking twice about what you're eating, what you're putting on your plate, and what restaurant you're choosing? Are you an unwilling pawn in a global conspiracy to commit corporate sabotage? Are you being manipulated into giving corporations free marketing? Maybe. But we will add that one of these conspiracy theories has been found to be absolutely, 100% true. You never can tell. Outback Steakhouse is Illuminati, you can absolutely play along with this one at home, and you can start by mapping out the Outback Steakhouse locations in your city. Are there at least five? Good, now connect them. With a pentagram. Clearly, say the conspiracy theorists, there's something satanic going on here, and honestly, if you've ever split a bloom and onion with just one other person, you might be tempted to hop on the bandwagon with this one. The theory spread across Twitter in 2017, with all kinds of people posting their pentagrams linking their nearby outback steakhouses. Because social media can sometimes be an awesome place. The chain was almost immediately linked with the devil, witchcraft, and the Illuminati, with some suggesting your stake had probably been killed as part of a ritual sacrifice. Complex reported Outback chimed in with an epic response, a bloom and onion hovering ominously over a section of map, but is it possible they're just trying to lure us into a false sense of security? Chipotle in corporate sabotage, you're probably familiar with Chipotle's rash of food poisoning outbreaks. According to Business Insider, they were catapulted into the public eye when separate restaurants had outbreaks of norovirus, salmonella, and E. coli all within a few months during 2015, and when it happened again in 2017, some people thought there was a pattern. Aaron Allen of the restaurant consultant group Aaron Allen & Associates, saw a pattern not just in food poisoning, but in stock activity afterwards. After a scandal, Chipotle stock dropped. That's generally not a good thing, and he suggests they're being sabotaged to make their stock drop and, behind the scenes, make some stock traders a pretty penny. It's complicated stock market talk, but basically, the balance says short sellers act when they know a stock is dropping in price. They essentially sell stock they don't have at the high price and buy it when it tanks, so it's a huge gamble. Alan says someone's poisoning Chipotle customers to purposely tank their stock and benefit the short sellers, but how much are we talking here? He says between 2015 and 2017, there's been around $459 million to be made that way. Starbucks Name Butchery It doesn't matter what your name is, it seems like Starbucks will find a way to get it horribly wrong on your cup. Even a Jennifer can go in order of Andy Caramel Macchiato, and be handed a cup that proudly proclaims it's for Jeannie Fur. All baristas can't possibly be that bad at names, can they? Sure, there's some that might give you reason to pause, but every time? And? Well, this one actually makes a lot of sense. What's the first thing you do when you get a hilariously misspelled name on your cup? You post it on social media, don't you? The video argues names are misspelled on purpose, just so you do exactly that. You're giving them free advertising, the theory goes, and let's be honest, have you ever seen an epic misspelling and wanted to go there just to see what they do to your name? Not so far-fetched now, is it? The Devil's Drink This complicated theory says almost everything in the logo, slogan, and packaging of Monster Energy Drinks is a shout-out to the devil. At the heart of the entire theory is the M logo itself. Think it's just supposed to look like the claws of a monster slashing through from the other side? Nay, say the theorists. Those individual claw marks are supposed to be in the shape of the Hebrew letter Vav, which stands for six. There are three in a row, so that's 666. There's also the slogan, Unleash the Beast, the cross in monsters that goes upside down when you drink it, and the naughty words. But, there's not really anything to it, and the Daily Dot has debunked the entire thing with one simple bit of information. 
If you want to spell out 666 in Hebrew, it's not literally Vav, Vav, Vav. In Hebrew, it's written as 666, which is represented by the letters Semekresh Tav Vav. That hasn't stopped the theory from being repeated on forums across the internet since around 2007. Truth, or free advertising? Poison fluoride, this one's an oldie but a goodie, and in 2017, Mike took a look into a group of people who still believe we're being poisoned by the fluoride in our water. It's not just regular, boring old poison, either, they believe fluoride also lowers a person's IQ, contributes to infertility, causes the early onset of puberty, calcifies some organs, and can even be used to control minds. Alex Jones, Infowars mouthpiece and most devoted conspiracy theorist of all, even claims fluoride can make a person spontaneously become gay. In the 1950s, fluoride was considered a communist plot, and some believe it destroys the Penang land. Fluoride has been added to much of the U.S. drinking water since 1945, and the numbers say it's reduced tooth decay by up to 40 percent. But doubt set in right from the beginning, and the Science History Institute says it was even there during an early experiment in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Claims of peeling tooth enamel and sore gum circulated even then, and once people started throwing around terms like bad science and powerful politics, the fluoride conspiracy theories were up and running. Obesity and fat food, this is one of those conspiracy theories that really makes you think, and it goes back to 1972 and the book Pure, White, and Deadly, How Sugar is Killing Us and What We Can Do to Stop It. It was written by John Yudkin a British nutritional professor who had his career and reputation destroyed after the book was released. Other nutritionists partnered with the food industry to condemn his work when he argued that sugar is so bad for us that if its effects were seen in any other additive, it would be banned. The Guardian says it was a dangerous stance to take. Fast forward to 2016, and Gary Taubes is the case against sugar. He argues for a conspiracy designed to keep people from realizing the hard truth, it's sugar that's making us fat, not fat. The big thing goes further, suggesting the government is working with the sugar industry and Big Pharma to benefit all of them and none of us. Big Sugar sells more, the population gets more and more unhealthy, and Big Pharma reaps the profits of a population more and more dependent on various medications. Legit, or no?